SpaceX will soon be sending its Starship on its first ever orbital flight this year. This test attracts a lot of attention from media and space exploration interests around the world. And the point that continues to grab the attention of fans is that this experiment will involve the insanely powerful 70 meters tall super heavy booster as well, which has never made it above the ground. Join us as we explore what SpaceX is doing to prepare the booster for the enormous task as well as the latest developments of the mighty Super Heavy Booster. First of all, let's find out what Elon Musk's great ambitions with the Super Heavy Booster are. Elon Musk has great ideas for space exploration, and one of his lifelong goals is to establish human settlements on Mars. Musk will require a powerful spaceship capable of lifting big payloads to transport all of the essential goods from Earth to Mars in order to transport the colonists to the Red Planet. The spacecraft must be capable of traversing the immense distance that separates the two worlds. The Starship will be used for additional purposes such as transporting bulk freight and crew to Earth's orbit for other regions in space. It will also transport NASA astronauts to the moon's surface from its orbit. Musk has also proposed that Starships be used as unique space refueling stations for other Starships embarking on extended interplanetary journeys. This is why SpaceX is going all out with the Super Heavy's design. With a gross liftoff mass of over 3 million kilograms, it will be the most powerful launch vehicle ever. Standing up, you'd have to take a step back to view the top of the booster, which is the height of a 23-story building. It's 9 meters in diameter and composed of steel just like the 50 meter tall spacecraft that rests atop it. So back to our previous question, what is SpaceX doing to prepare the booster for the enormous task? Following the hugely successful historic landing of Starship SN15 on May 5th, SpaceX started races to get the Starship ready for its first orbital flight, and it has turned to conduct tests on the Super Heavy itself. In fact, SpaceX began work on the Super Heavy booster stage in autumn of 2020, which Booster Number 1, or BN1, now renamed Booster 1, with stacking of the first prototype completed in March of 2021 in the High Bay Vertical Assembly Building at the company's South Texas launch site. At that time, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk announced that BN1 was a production pathfinder, a prototype type or test unit not intended for flight not intended for flight testing but used to determine how best to produce future vehicles instead BN1 was scrapped in favor of moving forward with BN2 with the goal of having BN2 on the orbital launch pad before the end of April 2021 a second unit designated B2.1 was scheduled to fly in June of 2021, however both 2 and 2.1 were reclassified as test sections in May of 2021. In early June of 2021, B2.1 was moved to a launch pad to undergo stress testing using hydraulic rams and then was scrapped. After that, two super heavy prototypes, stars of the SpaceX show, appeared. Booster 3 and Booster 4. B3, which the engineers assembled out in the open, was rolled out to the launch pad in Boca Chica at the beginning of July. It would be the first full-scale prototype of the booster to undergo actual testing after it, after it has completed cryogenic pressure tests of its fuel tanks. The first ever test of the tall Super Heavy took place on July 19th. When Booster 3 was fired for the first time in a static fire test, it had three Raptor engines attached. Musk tweeted about the test, saying, Full test duration firing of three Raptors on Super Heavy Booster. SpaceX's official Twitter account also immortalized the event, tweeting, First static fire test of the Super Heavy Booster, with an attached picture of the rockets being fired. As it was a static fire test, the Super Heavy prototype did not clear off the ground, even if it eventually lifted off the ground in a future test. Musk has said that Booster 3 wouldn't fly to space. The honor will go to B4. It will be the prototype to launch on its first orbital test flight. 
Earlier this month, after being stacked two stages to test for fitting, Booster 4 was rolled back to High Bay for testing and installing additional wiring outside the hull. And in recent days, Booster 4 has been equipped with more Raptors to prepare for a series of tests before the orbital flight took place. Now, what's inside the Super Heavy Booster 4? Elon Musk was determined to build and perfect orbital flight. He has directly come to stay and supervise at Starbase. And for the first time, Musk shared a picture of the Super Heavy Booster, and there is no doubt it would be an absolute beast. Musk accompanied the photo with a caption, completing feed system for 29 Raptor rocket engines on Super Heavy Booster. We could see a lot of pipes in the plumbing system of the engine system showing how complicated the booster is. What stands out is the system of metal tubes that radiate outward from the engine section's center like the spokes on a bicycle wheel. However, Musk confirmed what we saw was child's play compared to the rest of the plumbing system. He said in another tweet, and that's just the primary fuel lines. The maze of secondary plumbing and wiring is our greatest concern. While we can only see the major lines, there is more detailed plumbing to each of the Raptor engines. To get what the sheer scale of the section of the Super Heavy and Musk's tweet was, you could count up 23 SpaceX employees working on it at the same time. Musk also confirmed the number of Raptor engines that will be installed in the B-4 prototype. Previous estimates put the total number of Raptor engines on the finished booster at under or around 30. However, Musk's tweet confirms that there will be 29 of the latest prototypes built. Whether this number change depends on the results of the test flights, as SpaceX continues to refine its design. However, with 29, it is a significant improvement over Booster 3, which had only three Raptor engines. Elon Musk's plan is rising to 32 later this year, along with thrust increase per engine, possibly with B5. Now that's a very impressive number. SpaceX is growing by leaps and bounds day by day. And I can't wait any longer for this orbital flight, but just like you guys, I have to. <laughs> Anyway, how is the design of the Super Heavy Booster? In a recent video tour of Starbase with Tim Dodd, Elon Musk revealed the special designs of the Super Heavy Booster. Although the dry mass of Super Heavy is a variable target, Musk stated that it should be around 200 tons. The engines weigh approximately 2 tons, including mounting mass. The fuel tank and liquid oxygen tanks weigh around 80 tons, and the inner stage weighs approximately 20 tons, including four grid fins weighing approximately three tons apiece. With design tweaks, Musk estimates that the Super Heavy's final dry mass will be between 160 to 200 tons. The grid fins are currently powered by electricity and are driven by a modified Tesla Model 3 motor. Because an automobile requires several hours of energy, whereas grid fins only require two or three minutes of electricity, the batteries are now energy optimized rather than power optimized. Because of these factors, Musk stated that the batteries, like much of Starship's design, are only temporary, and battery mass can shrink by a factor of 10. The grid fins on the Super Heavy do not fold in like they do on the Falcon 9 as they are a separate mechanism that adds additional complexity, mass, and failure modes. Furthermore, unlike the Falcon 9, the grid fins of Super Heavy are not evenly placed 90 degrees apart. The rationale for the alteration, according to Musk, is that Super Heavy demands greater pitch control authority. Thus, the grid fins were moved closer together to improve pitch control. Moving on to the propellant, the booster is designed to carry 3,600 tons, which is around 78% liquid oxygen. The Raptor burns at a fuel-rich mixture ratio of 3.5 to 3.7. A fuel-rich mixture, a fuel-rich mixture burns at a lower temperature than the stoichiometric ratio, which would cause the engine to melt. Musk noted that the Super Heavy's propellant residuals are on the order of 20 tons, which is much greater than the Falcon 9's 1-ton propellant residual. 
And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to help assist us directly, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And don't forget to share your ideas in the comments below so we know where to improve upon. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Otherwise, thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. This is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and I'll see you next time.